Let me show you three use cases on how you can use AI if your SaaS spend is a big problem. In this video, I'm going to show you practically when we have something to solve in finance, how we can use AI everywhere. The first use case will be directly how to use AI for financial analysis. And here we are going to check how we can use AI to identify a strategy to decrease our SaaS spend. First, let me show you the wrong way. This is something I see a lot of time. People don't know how to use AI for financial analysis. Imagine we have this file. So we see the suspend per vendor, department, type of contract, the spend by months in actuals, and the budget. So let's go now to ChatGPT. Let's just prompt, really like in a lazy way, analyze this file. And then I will upload because I have a ChatGPT business account. So no problem in terms of data confidentiality for my business. And I use ChatGPT 5 instant, so to get a really fast answer. Let's see if this is going to help me. So the big advantage with ChatGPT 5 instant you get a super fast answer. But here, ChatGPT is just describing what is in the file. I don't need to know what is in the file. I know my file. This is not really useful. And why? Because we use ChatGPT 5 instant, fast answer, but not really thinking hard. My prompt was really short and I didn't explain what I wanted. And I didn't explain my goal to decrease the cost and improve the margins. Now, let me show you the right way to do financial analysis. Using the same example, I'm going to ChatGPT and now I give context and the FPN manager, I need to analyze the SaaS to reduce the SaaS, but also to improve margins. And really important, I am talking to ChatGPT like it's my junior. Because imagine before, if you just send a junior analyze this file, you'll just get something bad. But now this junior, I'm explaining what I want. And number one, as an ex-auditor, I always ask this because this is what I always did in audit. You always need to check that your data is consistent, that the data you are working with is good. Because if not, there is no point of working on the file if your basis is bad. Always, first step, check the consistency of data. And number two, think about the best analysis to perform our goal. And for this, we have the four types of analysis. We have descriptive, diagnostic, predictive, and prescriptive. What is descriptive analysis? It's what you measure. Inside, you measure what happened. What is diagnostic analysis? You are going to understand what happened. So what are the reasons for the data to be this way? What is predictive? You are going to predict what is happening in the future. So for example, you do a sensitivity analysis. And number four, prescriptive analysis. If you have a target, you are going to work to define what are the lever to achieve this target. So if you have these four types of analysis, you will get a much better output. You are forcing AI to go deeper than this standard descriptive analysis. Number three, we are going to ask to perform the calculations and to show the details. We'll ask something for number four, which is important, is to get the graphs. And number five, to write the commentaries. So I'm adding the file and really important, I'm not using ChatGPT. 5 instant, I'm using the thinking mode. This is using the reasoning model behind ChatGPT 5 thinking. This is the model you need when you want to do financial analysis and calculations. Okay, so now let's see the output. So after a few minutes, ChatGPT is first creating the graphs. So you always get the graph even if I asked to do it at number 4. But we see those graphs are already much more complex compared to the first analysis that we did before. And after 2.5 minutes, here is the full analysis for us. So first, what we get is an Excel file that I can click on to see the calculations that were done to create those graphs. So let's open the Excel file to see what is inside. So we have our raw data, but also some additional columns were added. You can see that in column Q. Then we have the total by months, by vendor. We have also the Pareto for all of the vendors. And then we have the check. Let's see what was done in the check. First, it did a check to make sure that the variance calculated is correct. So no mismatch, no missing and no duplicates, no surprise negative amounts, anything that it looks weird. There are 10 outliers, which was flagged in the Excel file we got. So like this, we can analyze after. And here also another check for consistency. Also, you can see that our date range is correct. So again, no problem in our data. Now, which type of analysis? And that's where you can see that by asking descriptive, diagnostic, predictive, and prescriptive, we force the AI to go much deeper. So here you can see that the descriptive is quite standard, but then then for the diagnostic, we have something like the long tail vendors outside the Pareto 80%. So basically the type of vendors which we might pay for something we don't use. And then with predictive, we have a forecast and with prescriptive, we have some analysis to show us what should be done to decrease the amount of SaaS spent. In terms of calculations on top of the files, finally here we get some insights. For example, we get to see what are the top vendors, what are the top categories 
is we can see here the 12 months projections based on the current status. Here are the propositions from ChatGPT. For example, here the baseline is 39 million and it says that if we move to an annual payment for the contracts which are right now not annual, we can already save 2.6 million based on the fact that you get an annual reduction, which we all know that when you take annual, you get a much better price than if you take quarterly or monthly. Then it shows us the charts and then finally we have here commentaries which when we read about that we understand better our data and it can already help us create insights for my management. One thing that I noted that I want to show you it goes beyond just data analysis. For example here it's going to show us best practices. For example here it tells me for governance and process that I should put in place a review of the contracts above 10k and also make sure that I have a good renewal calendars to follow up to see the if we are not renewing contracts that we don't need. And then it tells us where to look first. It's not only like a typical commentary describing what are the problems. It shows us where to look and where to attack those problems and the recommendations. So it's even having like a mini CFO inside your AI tool. So this is how we use AI to go from a simple problem, meaning we want to reduce our suspense. And when you use it the right way with the right model and the right prompt, you can here do an ad hoc analysis. Of course, you need to review the calculation you need to make sure you understand them and that you can back them up and then also save the working files. But that was just one prompt and two minutes and a half of work from ChatGPT. After the review, imagine how much more you can get in one hour of working with this AI as your assistant, how far you go in the analysis and how if you go to your manager, if you go to the CEO, to IT, how much proposition you have. Imagine how much money you can make your company save on all of these software licenses and subscriptions. If you want to get the full prompt if you want to get the step by step, I will attach a link where you can download a handbook that will show you how to do everything we did here in this video. So make sure to click the link if you want to try it by yourself. I will also share my files so you can test all of this by yourself with the right prompt and with the files so you can also try to train yourself on these prompts and these use cases. Let me show you how you can automate your data preparation with AI. Let me show you the wrong way. Imagine here if you have this file showing different licenses from different departments that you collected as a finance manager and you want to consolidate this file to analyze your license and potentially seeing if you can save some cost on license spent. You can see each of these tabs are different. If you wanted to map this tab, you'll have to take some time to map it. So let's go inside ChatGPT to check how ChatGPT can help us. Let me show you what people are doing wrong. Here, they will assume that ChatGPT can do this work. We'll just upload the file and just say consolidate. After a few seconds, ChatGPT executes. Let's see if indeed we have these licenses consolidated and easy to analyze. Let's open it. What do we see? This didn't really work. It didn't work because ChatGPT just like copied the lines under each other. For each tabs, we had each lines copied under each other and without a mapping of the headers. So this doesn't work. You still have to map everything. So what is the solution? Let me show you how to do it. So we are going to use something more advanced. So first, my prompt is really important. First, I explain that I am an FPNA manager. I explain my goal and then I also explain my problem. My file has multiple tabs, but each tab looks different. And then I give a goal to my AI chatbot. I explain that I want to consolidate all of these tabs with the following information. Basically, I describe what I want to have as a consolidated files, which headers, department, vendor product, license board, used, the price per unit and the total cost and utilization ratio. So then I will re-upload the file and really important, now I'm activating the agent mode. So basically, this is a function that almost nobody is using, but let's see if the agent mode can do a better work with this prompt. And now basically what is happening is that the agent mode opens a virtual computer in this virtual computer. It will run some data transformation, will read the file, will combine the file and will do the work that we will have done ourselves. And let's see if this works. Let's open it. Now, on the left side, we have our file done by the AI agent. That's on the left side. And on the right side, I have my original file. So let's compare if there was no mistake. So we can see here for the marketing department, Adobe has the correct number of seats, the correct total cost, and it even calculated the price per unit and the utilization ratio. On top of consolidating everything, mapping everything, and having everything on the right category, and also adding on the left side the department 
department, this for us calculated fields. And even when I didn't have the total cost, let's see here if for this line, it did the correct calculation. So we have 7.5 times 25 is 187.5. So exactly like what ChatGPT calculated. I can tell you, I checked everything here and there was no problem. Everything was correctly calculated. So you can see how fast this helped us. And this is something we don't use enough in finance is this agent mode. Okay, but now you might ask, how do I automate even further? Because a big part of the work was to fine tune the prompt. Well, let's go to the next step. And the next steps, we are going to use a custom GPT. But for this, we need to know the correct instruction. And for this, my trick is to use these two keywords, system prompt. After that the agent did the work that I wanted, that I'm really happy, I'm going to write the following prompt. What would be the system prompt to get exactly the same result on a new file for another month? So imagine we want to do exactly the same, but next month we have to do again this work. And I ask to be as much detailed as you can. So here I have a really detailed prompt. I'm going to copy this full prompt. And with this full prompt, we are going together to create something that we can reuse every month. Then what I will do is I will go to ChatGPT to the custom GPT function, and I will create a GPT, which I call the license consolidator that I described a bit what it is, but the instruction comes from from ChatGPT itself. It's basically once you have done something successful, instead of trying to re-explain again next time, just ask the system prompt, copy and paste it here in the instructions, and then you can just add a conversation starters. Make sure to activate the code interpreters and data analysis here in the bottom. And then we are going to create. I have a team, so I can also share that with my team. So here, all of everybody at Nicolas Boucher, my organization, everybody can access to it. And that's also the beauty of it. If somebody is really good at creating these GPTs, they can create it for everybody. So now this is my new file for October and you can see the figures changed. We have new figures, but the structure of the file is the same. So let's go to ChatGPT and let's ask just by uploading this. And this time we don't need to prompt like really, really long prompt to explain everything. We just say, do your work, consolidate the file attached. After a few minutes, we don't even need the agent mode anymore because thanks to the instructions, ChatGPT knows exactly what to do. And here after 43 seconds, the job is done. Now I can open it and see the consolidated workbook. Of course, always pay attention to verify that it has been done correctly. But for this, what you can also do is ask ChatGPT to create some checks for you. You can also ask to create some step in between to show you that the total is the same than the original file. The number of lines is the same to show you maybe create a file with formulas inside. That's also possible is to have formulas inside. I advise all of you to do all of these steps first do it manually with either ChatGPT thinking or if it doesn't work with agent mode and once you have done the manual step then just create a system prompt and create a gpt for it and you can do exactly the same with copilot agents or gemini gems or cloud projects third use case imagine that your boss is asking you to reduce the SaaS spend to actually get a good benchmark to know if your company is spending more than the others and which department are the good ones which departments are the worst ones. We are going to check if AI can help us because in the past, if you wanted to benchmark, you needed to search online and surf the web to find some reports. You will basically have a lot of tabs open before you could get to these results. But instead now, we are going to use the deep research mode of ChatGPT. Again, I explain what is the context. So I am an fp &A manager and I want to do a deep research to get the spend by employee, to know also by industry and by departments and by company size. And I want a summary table. Really important to ask for a summary table. Then you can see that after I will click on the plus button to activate the deep research mode. Then I launch the research. But when I launch the research, ChatGPT is always confirming to me what do I really want? Because it doesn't want to basically do any research that is useless. It's asking me about the scope in terms of geography, the type of companies, also the timing of the data. Finally, it also also ask my uh, industry. So here, really like one tip, don't spend too much time on this. Just say yes, no, like one keyword. You can see that it's enough for ChatGPT to understand and to precise the instructions, like to make sure the requirements are understood. So now we launch the deep research. I'm going to accelerate a bit. What is happening? ChatGPT is launching its own Google search or web search. And here it has already 24 uh, sources and I can click on that. Now I have 42 resources and I can check the reports if I want but let's wait a bit until it's finished. Now, 
after 10 minutes that I cut for you, we got 51 resources and a full report prepared for us. And what is good here, every amount that you see, every fact has a link. I can verify if it's the right report that I want, the right information, and if I'm okay to use that or not. And you can see I ask some tables as an output, and this is exactly what I get. At the end, what I can do is I can take the table that I want to use, and we are going to use the summary table, and I can copy this table, and I can just paste that either in Google Sheet or in Excel. So here, let's copy the summary table and let's paste it in Google Sheet. And here we go. My work is done. Of course, if I will take this shortcut and think that it's fully done, I will take a lot of risk because I've not reviewed the sources. I've not reviewed if it makes sense. You still need to review like your manager. Imagine if you had to create that from scratch. So this third use case here shows you again how you can save a lot of time with AI. But one thing and one message really important, and that's what I teach as well when I give training to corporate teams. It should not replace your thinking. It should not replace your responsibility. It just needs to accelerate the tasks that are super tedious. And here it should make you just more knowledgeable because imagine if you needed to grab this information, you might have stopped with just one report. And here you have 10, 20, 30, even like 50 sources, which you can rely on to make your analysis. And after you can choose, maybe some of them you don't rely on. Some of them maybe that you are aware of, you want the report to emphasize on it. And so you can ask by iterating, oh, please just focus on this like five reports and then, and then redo here the analysis. Again, always, you are now the manager, you have to review and you are still owner of the output because when you are going to present that and use it for your analysis, people are going to ask, where did you find that? What is your source? And if you understand it and you have to back that up by your work. If you want to get the prompts, I have here in the description, I've made a handbook where you can have all of the prompts here, all of the files, so you can do it by yourself. And there is even more. Download that in the description. And if you want to learn that from me and from other experts, you can join the AI Finance Club. This is where you will learn all of this live in master classes, but also in video courses, in articles. You get all of this just in one subscription where basically you don't have to look everywhere else. Everything is in the AI Finance Club and you are there with more than 1,500 CFOs. This is the first place and the most exclusive place where all of the people in finance who love AI and who wants to use AI in their job are today. If you want to join us, feel free to check the link in the description. And if you want to continue after this video, check the video I did on how to create a financial model with AI. Check there. And don't forget to subscribe and to activate the notification if you want to get my next video.